Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Milan at Infinite Life and welcome to another studio setup video. Today, I'm adding a second display to my setup and we are going to be unboxing the Gigabit M32U gaming monitor. Now I've had this monitor for about a month now, so I've gotten a chance to stress test it quite a bit. So this will be a full hands-on review. I will say, I love this monitor. Of course, right off the bat, it is a gaming monitor first. This is what it's primarily intended for, but its versatility with so many different inputs allows me to use it as a second iMac monitor for content creation and for productivity with work. So let's break down all the stats. We have a 31.5 inch IPS panel, 3840 by 2160, giving us a crisp 4K ultra high definition resolution with a max 144 hertz refresh rate, along with variable refresh rate, a one millisecond response time, and VESA a 400 display with high dynamic range. So why is all this important? Because the Gigabit M32U supports HDMI 2.1, which allows you to have the best gaming experience with the new generation of consoles like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Now, if you're a PC gamer, this thing is also certified AMD FreeSync Premium Pro and is compatible with G-Sync as well. Now, now before we get too deep into this unboxing and review, please go ahead and hit that like button and consider following me if you enjoy this type of content I am providing. I am less than 2 months new to my channel and every bit of support goes a long way. So thank you to all my current and new followers and with that, let's begin. Alright, so unboxing and setting up this monitor is pretty straightforward and easy. The stand comes in two parts, with the feet and the arm. You also get all the cables you need to get started. The packaging comes with three power outlet cables depending on what region of the world you live in. I'll be using the type AB cable here in the US. You also get a 1.4 DisplayPort cable, a SS USB cable, and for next-gen gaming, an HDMI 2.1 cable, which is a great addition. Now attaching the arm to the monitor is pretty easy. Just line up the arm into the back of the monitor and with a simple click, it's secured. Next, attach the base with the built-in screw and tighten. And that's it, your monitor is assembled and ready to go. One thing that Gigabit does a terrible job at is telling you that there's a power switch right next to the power cable port. Make sure you have that flipped on. I wasn't aware of this and when I set up my monitor, I initially thought it might have been damaged on delivery because I could not get the monitor to start. Now looking at the back of the monitor, the design is pretty simple. Taking it out of the box you wouldn't even think this is a gaming monitor. No fancy RGB lights or over design but honestly I prefer it that way because no one is going to be looking at the back of the monitor anyway. You have the Gigabit logo running across the top with the M32U designation on the left side. Now I will say the overall build quality is okay. The plastic they use doesn't feel premium especially for a 4k ultra high definition gaming monitor but I'm not worried about it because the monitor will be staying at my studio desk and I will be looking at the IPS panel 99% of the time. The front is pretty simple as well. It does have wide feet to support the 32 inch screen size. The outer bezel for 3 fourths of the screen is fairly narrow and you barely notice it, especially compared to my 2019 iMac monitor bezel. The only noticeable bezel on the M32U is the lower half where the Gigabit branding is located. Let's revisit the features of the screen one more time. We have a 4K IPS ultra high definition display at 3840 by 2160 a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, a max 144Hz refresh rate, and capabilities of variable refresh rate, a 1001 contrast ratio, and HDR400, as well as a 1 millisecond response time. This is all just fancy talk to say, your picture quality is going to be absolutely amazing and fast, especially when it comes to gaming. The image quality, the colors, the contrast, and the smoothness is absolutely perfect. This isn't an OLED display, so of course the blacks aren't true blacks, and there are local dimming zones across the screen to simulate a wide contrast. Looking straight on, I don't notice any IPS glow, but when I'm looking at it from an angle, you do see it happen. But this is to be expected from this technology of monitors to keep the response time to what it is. One of the great things about the IPS monitor is that the viewing angles are ridiculously good and the colors don't wash out until you get to a very extreme angle. For me, this monitor will be sitting dead center and it's not going to affect me very much. It's a good feature in case I was to change up my setup at any time. My main driver for this screen will be my PlayStation 5 and I gotta say it is a match made in heaven. One of the things I love most about this monitor is a variety of input options. So on the back, you have two HDMI 2.1 ports, which I use one for my PlayStation 5. You have a Display Port 1.4, which I can connect my work PC to. And you have a USB Type-C, which I use to connect my 2019 iMac, and I have a dual monitor setup, and I enjoy the 120Hz refresh rate through the USB-C cable. I could even switch it up and attach my 2021 16-inch M1 MacBook Pro, which allows me to transfer data and even charge my laptop all over one cable. You also have three USB Type-A and a headphone jack. It is 
the versatility of this monitor, which is one of the key reasons why I went with the Gigabit M32U. To be able to control and manage all these different inputs, Gigabit has built in a KVM switch, which will allow you to change video inputs and allow you to use one set of USB mouse and keyboard to control your different devices. Now, all these features are accessible via a joystick toggle located on the back right hand panel of the monitor. It's easy to reach and very responsive. It allows you to add shortcuts by pushing the stick in four cardinal directions, or you can click the stick in to access the menu for more options. But when it comes to the menu system itself, there's a lot left to be desired. It's very simple, uninspired, and honestly, very low resolution quality. It's as if it was an afterthought when it was designed. Does it work? Yes. Does it get the job done for what it is? Yes. You are able to move about the menu pretty easily with the use of the joystick. Not a major learning curve is involved, and that's a good thing. But again, for the amount of money you are paying for this monitor, you would expect something more polished and refined. Now there are a few additional gaming features that can be turned on within the menu system, like a timer, a counter, and a frames per second display, which shows up in a display box in the top right hand corner. You can even activate a crosshair overlay for FPS games. Once I got my settings dialed in, there is little interaction with the menu system. Most mostly to change the inputs between my PlayStation 5, my iMac, or my work PC. Not much else via the actual display settings. Now the M32U does come with two 3 watt built in speakers, but honestly they are not very impressive, and I would not depend on them for great audio output. They are good in a productivity setting for zoom calls and such, but for high end audio like movies and gaming, you will need a solid pair of Bluetooth headphones. Now I am one to say that gaming is meant to be enjoyed on a large screen. The bigger, the better. With how detailed and immersive video games have gotten, you really need a large real estate to appreciate the level of detail. That's why I love gaming on my 77 inch Sony A80J, but in certain situations, a large screen can actually be a hindrance, especially when it comes to competitive gaming, most commonly with FPS games. So a gaming monitor in this situation is ideal, but a 32 inch can still be on the larger side, and your eyes have to wander around the screen to spot your targets. So one of the cool features of the M32U is that you can reduce the screen size output to a 24 or 20 27 inch display to keep your eyes more centered and taking the full screen at once if you are a competitive gamer. You still have all the features of 4K, 120Hz, variable refresh rate, and HDR. So in a larger story driven game like Ghost of Tsushima, Horizon Forbidden West, or Final Fantasy 7 Remake, I am definitely playing in the full 32 inch display. But games like Call of Duty and Apex Legends in 27 inch downsizing is the sweet spot for me. Now this monitor has all the adjustment capabilities that you would expect. It can move up and down with little effort, it moves all the way down flush to the leg stand, as well as tilting up and down and pivoting to the left and the right. Its only limitation is that it does not rotate to a vertical or portrait orientation. Now if you do want to mount this monitor, it is VESA compatible with a 100 by 100 millimeter connector. So with all that being said, do I recommend this monitor? Absolutely yes. If you are looking for an all-in-one do-it-all monitor with great connectivity and inputs, able to handle the new generation gaming consoles like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, and more, this is a great option. Let me know what gaming monitor you are using or planning on getting, as I always love to hear about your guys' setup. And with that, we have made it to the end of another video. So thank you guys for hanging around all the way to the end. You are absolutely awesome, and I love your support. Please leave a like as it helps my young and growing channel. Please consider following if you like setup and gaming content, as I have so much much more planned for the near future and help me spread the word by telling your friends and family about my channel as well. I appreciate everyone's support and we will see you in the next video.